Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Welcome to Heston Asian United Reform Church morning service. Let us worship the living God. In the beginning of our worship, I'm going to read Hebrew chapter 6, verse 19. And the theme of this uh, verse is unwilling hope. The Bible says, This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. The reflection on this verse is, Scripture teaches us that hope is necessary because the will is often uncooperative. We all know we should possess hope. We know that as Christians, we should be filled with hope. But how many of us have found ourselves praying the prayer of Paul in Romans chapter 7, verse 19? Lord, I know what I should do, but I don't do it. I know what I shouldn't do. And here I am doing it again. Hebrew chapter 6, verse 18 is very interesting. It says that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation. We have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. Many of us have experienced difficult times and we know our hope ought to be in the Lord. But sometimes our will is uncooperative. And we just have to forget everything and hang on to God. Flee to Him for our own refuge. These thoughts are by Pastor David Jeremiah in his book Sanctuary. Let us pray to God and uh, try to focus upon the hope he has given us. He is our hope. Let us give him thanks. Loving God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks because you're the source of hope in the situation when we are becoming hopeless, helpless. You are giving us strength. We praise you for your glorious hope. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have sent your only begotten Son. He came to this world, took the human form, and gave us wonderful eschatological hope that he is coming back into this world. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon your people. We give you thanks for the sleep and for the comfort you've given us. Heavenly Father, we ask your anointing upon your people, those who want to have fellowship with you. Almighty God, please be with us and bless your people wherever they are worshiping you. Help us that we may glorify your name. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. In the beginning of our worship, we are going to sing him. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. And uh, there will be hymns on the screen. <clears throat> Let us praise him. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, early in the morning a song shall rise to Holy, holy, holy. 
blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. and he is worthy of all the praise and honor. Let us give him thanks. It's a prayer of thanksgiving and uh, confession of our sins. Let us spend some time in silence and think about our weaknesses, our faults, and try to focus upon the mercy of God. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from every kind of wrong. Almighty God, most merciful. We confess that we have sinned through our own fault and in common with others in thought, word, and deed and through what we have left undone. We ask to be forgiven. Almighty God, we understand that you are perfect. We give you praise for your presence. We give you praise for your power of forgiveness. In this time of confession, Almighty God, we give you thanks that you're worthy of forgiveness. Almighty God, we repent and we believe and we declare. We declare your kindness and compassion. Almighty God, we acknowledge that we have not loved you with all our heart and soul and mind and strength. We have not discerned Christ we have hated when we should have loved. 
broken when we should have healed. We have divided the church and allowed our brother and sister to go hungry while we have too much. Almighty God, we declare we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For all our sins, we deserve your judgment. And we plead for your mercy. In repentance and in faith, receive the promise of grace and the assurance of pardon. Here are words you have pressed, words that merit full acceptance. Christ came into the world to save sinners. To all who turn to him, he says, your sins are forgiven. He also says, follow me. Thanks be to God for his compassion and his mercy. Almighty God, we give you thanks for our families our loved ones, for the beauty of this universe, for the peaceful night, and for this glorious day, the day when you rose again, when you sent your Holy Spirit to the church. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your precious word. We give you thanks for this wonderful fellowship of the believers the people, those who are worshiping with us in their homes and in their comfort zone. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this country, for the freedom that we can worship you. We give you thanks for the beauty of your kindness. We give you thanks for the wonderful salvation you offered us. We give you thanks that you have opened your arm for the whole world. For your universal invitation and the grace. Almighty God, bless your people and give us a thankful heart. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. It is time to give him praise. We are going to sing another hymn. As the deer pants for the water, so my souls. <clears throat> As the deer pants for the water, so my soul comes after thee. You alone are my heart desire, and I long to worship. Scripture, our first reading on the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 1 to 12. Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, verse 1 to 12. And I will invite uh, Abraham Akil to read this scripture for us. John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 12. I am the true great man. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't 
produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is served from the wind, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the wind. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like useless branches that withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my word remain in you, and you may ask for everything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as, my, as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's command. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us give him thanks and praise. In number 269, when we walk with the Lord, that is in the book, not be on the screen, uh, mission praise, when we walk with the Lord. Number 269. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can run, not a cloud in the sky, but his smile briefly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sign nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but a toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a on or a cross, but is blessed we will trust and obey. Trust and obey, but there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor he shows, and the joy he bestows, and for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in we say to do, where is stand we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Let us pray. <clears throat> 
it's a prayer for intercession. Let us pray for the world where there is a problem, where there is a hunger, where there is a strife. We need to pray for the trouble people are facing in this world. Then may God be with them and bless them. Let us pray especially for the people, those who are victim of that flood in Pakistan and India. May Heavenly Father protect them. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the world that you have created, for its wonder and beauty and wealth. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the powers you have given us to enjoy its beauty and enjoy the fruit and enjoy the love you have shown. In this time of prayer, Heavenly Father, we pray for the people, those who are suffering in the different part of the world. And Father, we pray for the governments and for the people, those who are suffering having the experience of sorrow in their lives. We believe that your spirit strives in all men and women for truth and justice. Restore in us the confidence that your kingdom is sure. Rebuke the violence of wicked and cruel man. Give peace in our time, o Lord. Heavenly Father, bless our country, our queen and her household. Give wisdom to the queen's ministers and guide them in the choices that they before us today. We pray for our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson and his cabinet members. Give them wisdom and guide them. May we not rest till there is a place of dignity and freedom in our land for young and old, weak and strong. May we find our unity in a revival of true reverence for you, our Lord. We pray for our church, our church members, those who are away from the place of worship. Almighty God, we pray for the churches, those who are worshiping in our neighborhood, the people, those who are worshiping you in their homes. Teach us in humility to offer our services to our neighbors and to have care for those in need. Bless the old among us. Almighty God, I ask your protection for our children. Those who are ready to go to their institutions as there is the danger of this coronavirus. We ask your protection upon our children. We ask your guidance and protection for the teachers and for the police and all the other people, those who are serving the community. We pray for all the doctors and the nurses and the paramedical staff, for the people, those who are serving in the community. We pray for police and army, those who are active in the community to protect your people. Almighty God, we pray for Pakistan and wherever there is a disaster, there is a hunger and poverty as people are victim of this flood in the different cities in Pakistan. Heavenly Father, we ask your protection and your help. Be with them and protect them from all sorts of the diseases. Those who are homeless, those who are needy, meet their needs. Heavenly Father, we Ask your blessing upon the people, those who are suffering for the sake of gospel. 
those who are having the experience of persecution due to this good news as they are spreading your love in this community. Heavenly Father, those who are behind the bar, those who are away from their families and loved ones, set them free and give them hope. Be with us. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn to try to find out if it's uh, in the PowerPoint. I think that is uh, this one, sorry. Uh, just, uh, just be still. This one? Yes. I think that's the problem with the glass. <laughs> Thank you. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Sorry, because the computer is on the distance. Sometimes I have a problem with the glasses. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come call before Him now, with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found, we stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is Be still for the glory of the Lord, is shining all around. Even with holy fire, with splendor, Awesome is the sign, our radiant King of God. Be still for the glory of the Lord, is shining all around. Be still for the power of the Lord, is moving in this way. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister his praise. No work too hard for him, in faith receive from him. Be still for the power of the Lord, in moving in. by the word of God. Loving God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your Holy Spirit. We understand that we are not perfect. Our thoughts are limited. Our mind is limited. But you are perfect God. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have given us your spirit. So help us that we may understand your wisdom. Lead us, guide us, empower us and inspire us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Bless you people. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. But the sister of our team today is uh, very um, 
interesting. It's a question, in fact, why there are joyless Christians? Somebody said that he, he was not a Christian and he was uh, sharing this wonderful reflection or feedback or his observation. He said, I found that Christians, they are so jolly and they're always very happy. Their, face, their faces are very shining and they are so joyful. And I was so happy when I got this uh, feedback from the non-Christian. But unfortunately, the Christians, the Christian means Christ-like. Day by day, they are becoming joyless, disturbed. They have lost that power of joy in their lives why they are having this issue. Why joyless Christians are around us. They got the word of God. The Christ is among them because Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today and forever. He is risen from the dead. But the problem with the joyless Christians why they are not having such joy in their lives. What is a joy? The two words in English, joy and happiness. Whenever there is a time of rejoice, we are greeting to the people and we're saying, happy birthday, happy wedding anniversary. What is the difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is a temporary kind of thing. It's a worldly time of rejoicing. But the joy is permanent. The source of happiness, sometimes when people are happy due to their achievement, due to their wealth due to some other good things in their life. So they believe that that is a result of their achievement, their strength, their knowledge. But when we're talking about joy, the source of joy is God himself. Jesus Christ is a real joy giver. So the joy is permanent. We all need such joy. There's a wonderful quotation. The joy we have in Jesus cannot be extinguished by the circumstances of life. There are good and bad circumstances Sometimes the bad circumstances snatching the joy from our lives. But if we are having fellowship with our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, nobody can snatch that joy from our life. For that sake, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need a spiritual fullness in our life. I'm talking about spiritual joy, not the worldly joy. When we are talking about the spiritual joy, we need a spiritual fullness. There is a vacuum in our lives, in our heart. And only the Holy Spirit can fill that vacuum and that gap if you are not having such joy. What's the reason in the Bible for that joy among the people of God? 
Bible says, when the people, they were in the captivity, they were captured by the kings of Babel. They were in the captivity. They were crying. They were looking for liberation. In Psalm 126, he talked about that joy. Those who saw in tears will reap with songs of joy. In Psalm 126, King David is talking about the captivity when they were, they were not free and God sent them free and they were enjoying that joy. In Psalm 126 verse 2, our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. When they were enjoying that liberation, God set them free. So there was a song in their mouth. When we are joyful, we are praising the Lord. We are rejoicing. When they were returning from captivity, they were rejoicing. They were singing. So the first reason is when you are enjoying the salvation and the liberation, so we are becoming joyful. Second reason to be joyful is the blessing of spiritual life. In Isaiah chapter 61, when Jesus was talking about his mission, he was saying that the Spirit of God is upon me. He sent me to set free, set the captive free. And he offered us a salvation. So when we are enjoying the blessing of spiritual intimacy and fellowship with him, we are rejoicing. So if you don't have such intimacy with Jesus, if you're not having the flavor and the taste of that spiritual life, there will be no joy in our life. Other thing is, this is the precious word of God. This is a delight in the word of God. When we are reading the scripture, we are enjoying such delights of God's word. In Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16, when your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart. Delight, but I bear your name, O Lord God Almighty. He have eaten the word of God. This is the bread of life. When we are having this bread, when we are eating the word of God, we are filling our spiritual need is very important because we have the desire for the word of God. And only the word of God can fill us. It is a delight for the word of God in our life. If we are anxious to read the word of God, we will have such joy. If you are reading the scripture, I myself am always having such spiritual nourishment. When I'm, I'm reading the word of God, God is feeding his sheep through his word. It's very important. We all need a refreshment. It's a need of spiritual refreshing time. Time of spiritual refreshing. Acts chapter 8, verse 5. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. 
and verse 6 when the crowds heard philip and saw the miracles signs he did they all paid close attention to what he said and in verse 8 so there was great joy in that city there was a great joy not only in one place not only in one house but in the city they were rejoicing you know when nimaya he built the walls of jerusalem he constructed the doors and the gates of the jerusalem all the people they were standing in the ground from morning till evening they were weeping they were crying they were full with the joy there was a joy in them there were the tears of joy when they were listening the word of god they became so humble they were rejoicing that they were in the city of god they have renewed the city there was a restoration and they were enjoying such restoration there was a spiritual refreshment how many time we are enjoying such fellowship with him we just read from the gospel of john chapter 15 it's a beautiful beautiful chapter one of my favorite chapter because jesus is talking about uh, fellowship the purpose of these words is spiritual fullness and jesus is offering he promised that joy he promised that i will give you such joy he is the source as i said that in the beginning that we can receive such joy let's read it again if you obey my commands you will remain in my love just i have obeyed my father's commands and remain in his love i have told you that this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete so this is an incomplete joy without christ if you want to receive the full joy you need a fellowship with him you need to abide with him this is also joy in the fellowship of the believers in the first century church in the book of acts they were gathered together they were praising god god was filling their hearts with the joy and every day new people they were added into that church they were enjoying that fellowship if you will be with him in all sort of a situation in all sort of troubles whether it will be a famine will there be a persecution imprisonment or poverty loss of property loss of business loss of finances nobody can stop that joy these first century christians they were rejoicing in their poverty in their persecution in all sort of situation they were enjoying the fellowship with christ and this is a promise of god there will be a joy in revelation chapter 7 it's a wonderful wonderful word of god you can see how they were they were enjoying that uh, uh, that joy when there was a problem i would like to read that revelation chapter 7 verse 17 the word of god says you need to focus upon that for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd he will lead them to a spring of living water and god will wipe away every tear from their eyes the lamb of god is among his people and he will wipe every tear every tear every tear means all sort of the problem 
every tear he will wipe from your eyes is a living water. Sadness and sorrow will be abolished, banished. There will be no more sorrow in the presence of God. He will restore us. And in, X, uh, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, it's also very, very encouraging verse, chapter 21, verse 4. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. Listen to the word of God. He will wipe away. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. This is the God's promise. There will be no more pain. There will be no more sorrow. We are in a journey. This world is crying. This world is in a pain. But there is a promise of restoration. There will be a joy in the presence of God. There is a door of hope for each and every person in this world. There will be a joy in the fellowship of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, when he will come back. Brother and sister, if you are sad, if you are sorrowful, if there is a pain in your life, if there is suffering in your life, there is a promise of joy everlasting from our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. And praise God that it's a universal promise. Not only there will be joy in one person, no, there will be a joy in one family. There will be no joy only in one area, but the whole world. He will restore the whole world. People are concerned about the joy of their families. The president and the prime minister and the king, they are very much concerned about the happiness and the joy of their people. But our savior, Lord Jesus Christ, is very much concerned and anxious about the joy of this world is offering such joy to the world. There will be a restoration of the whole world. There will be a new heaven and new earth. And we will be with him. We will, we will enjoy such wonderful joy with him. Brother and sister, there shouldn't be any fear in us. As I said that, if there's a persecution, if there's a poverty, if there's a revolution in this world, he is with us. There's a sure guarantee for that joy in your problems, in your imprisonment, in your poverty. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10, Sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, poor, yet making many rich, having nothing, and yet possessing everything. If you have lost your joy, your possessions, there is a promise of restoration. There is a promise for joy in our life. Quickly, I want to say why there is no joy among the Christians. Three things. Lack of faith. Because if there is no faith, no confidence on Christ, we cannot be joyful. The second thing. If there is a greed of this world, if we are living with the I want mentality, more and more, we cannot have such joy which Jesus is offering us. There shouldn't be any greed among you. That will be a problem if there is a greed of wealth, status, and power. And the third thing, why we are not having such joy? Because we are away from the word of God. 
We are away from Christ, who is the living word. There is no spirit in us. Holy Spirit is the joy giver. If we are having these three things, faith, fellowship with Christ, and the Holy Spirit, then you will enjoy that joy from your Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning, it's my prayer that you may enjoy such fellowship with him. You may uh, have faith on him in all sort of the situations. Christ's joy is a wonderful and permanent joy. In John chapter 15, verse 11, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. That is his promise. In his presence, our joy will be complete. In Hebrew chapter 12, verse 2, I want to read this and then I will finish this. Try to focus upon the cross of Jesus Christ. There is a sustaining power in cross. He is having such power in cross. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. The author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endures the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He is the true foundation of our joy. Let us fix our eyes on Christ. Not on your problems, not on your circumstances. Your problems are not permanent. Your circumstances can change anytime. Think about your destination. Think about your Savior. Try to fix your eyes on Christ. Fix your eyes on Christ. He is a real joy giver. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks because for the sake of our joy, our peace, you send your son in this world. We give you thanks that you are filling our heart with your joy because you are the real joy giver. Heavenly Father, if there is any greed, if there is any lack of faith, lack of fellowship, lack of trust in our lives, please help us that we may overcome on these problems. We may enjoy your fellowship, your joy. Bless you people. In Jesus' name we ask. We are going to sing this uh, song, Give Me Joy in My Heart. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Let's see what is this uh, another book. <clears throat> Give me joy in my heart. It's a beautiful song, I like that. Give me joy in my heart. Sometimes I'm changing that because the Spirit of God is leading me and uh, um, I'm changing that uh, instantly. So please forgive me. And this is number 520, 523. 523. Because as the Spirit of God is leading us, we need to give Him thanks. Give me joy in my heart. Keep me praising. Give me joy in my heart, I pray. That's number 523. 
you can praise him wherever you are and you can rejoice with him because he's filling our heart with his joy. Give me joy in my heart, keep me praising. Give me joy in my heart, I pray. Give me joy in my heart, keep me praising. Keep me praising till the break of day. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King. Give me peace in my heart, give me So let us share the grace together. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Have a blessed day.